them down. Shields here. Stenshaw, Yuga Chukwu, Lindblad, Valton and Galuccio. Are we going to get the start? Let's race it on in a bar to the first corner. Antonelli holds on. Kamara in a second. No problems at all as they creep through. Then it is Sevrukin and Yannick de Brabant is going to try and hold on to fourth from Gilter, but Gilter gets there first. So Gilter into fourth. Kamara into second. Spin in the middle of the field. That's Valtonen. Valtonen's gone. Valtonen in the middle of the pack has spun it away and it's an absolute disaster for the SP Motorsport driver. Rafael Modenese with damage as well. He's off the course, but Juha Valtonen is desperately trying to get the car started again. So as Modenese gets out, Valtonen tries to get going, but it's disaster for the Finn. Yeah, that's not the best start that you want from Valtonen in the 107. You just saw, just got caught out in the squabble. There's De Brabanda. He's leading from the 134 and 108. In the silver helmet. You can't miss it. You go to the Chukwu in the lead. Who is it? And you couldn't guess it. Antonelli from Kamara and Tabrukin. No worries at all for Kimi Antonelli. He is out in force, doing an incredible job. And it's been a spectacular display. That is for sure. So far, so good. Lap two of 25. It's going to take a while for this one to play out. But Kamara and Severukin are running well in second and third. A great squabble as they come down the hill up towards the left hand into the second sector. And drivers are pushing their weight around, trying to make overtaking moves as they come through all the way. But this is a very tough race battle for the drivers as they continue to push on through. Retirements for Modenese and Valtonen, despite the fact that Valtonen did get go going again, he's had to pull the car off the road. So Valtonen, unfortunately, out of the race. Yellow flags down at the far end of the course where his car has parked. Antonelli just four tenths clear of Kamara, but he's not pulling away. The Brazilian is giving it everything to try and get past him. Yeah, only four tenths separating Antonelli and Kamara. Kamara, he's waited until the final, and now he's given it everything he's got. He's pushing the car to the absolute limit. It's just the same for some other drivers. You see dust being kicked up left, right and centre. Drivers exercising the track limits and pushing these carts to the limit. Yeah, big slide on the grass from Emilio Coivisto. The Finn, he was the one who kicked up the grass there. Solov, I can't make an overtaking move yet, he thinks. I'm going to have to sit behind Eduardo Villa and wait for an opportunity. Two drivers that were fighting for the podium last time. They're 17th and 18th this time. That is how tough it is in the FAA Karting European Championship trophy. That's two cards that have gone there together. That's a parallel. And that is uh, Alvio Spina. And he's gone with Caspian Hagman. Oh, what a bitter end to his first OK Senior European final. He was doing a great job all weekend. There's Schilter. Makes the bid on Sabrukin and into third position. He will try and put the French flag on the podium on home soil. Evan Schilter going beautifully as Hugo Chukwu sets the pace. Oh, and that's, uh, that's Elkin. That's Ariel Elkin, the Israeli. So I'm afraid Ariel Elkin has gone off the road there. And that is such a... Oh, oh sorry. No, that's Hugo Besson. That's his teammate. That is Hugo Besson. I apologise. Besson having gone off there on the exit of turn two. There's Modernese's stranded Praga. But uh, Hugo Besson is unfortunately not going to make it to the flag for the French locals. Kamara now within three tenths of Antonelli. Here we go. Game on. Kamara really pushing the car as hard as he can. You can see Antonelli still out in the lead, driving like he normally would. He is trying his best, but it's just not quite enough. Kamara, fastest lap of the race, 46.8. Three, four, this is great pace there from the Brazilian. Will he be able to take the fight to Antonelli? I guess we'll have to wait and see. 20 laps to go. This is not just the battle for the final here at Orne Le Bois. This is the battle for the European Championship between the two top competitors in the championship table if it stays like this. Kamara will be leading on 62 points. Antonelli will be second on 44. Arvid Lindbad trying to be part of that. He's on 41 points if it stays like this. But he needs to make progress, Arvid Lindbad. Still looking at third position in the Drivers' Championship if he remains in the top 10. But he needs to score more solidly than this. He can kind of write off on in a bois the way things are currently looking. He's going to have to get it back together in time for Sano and Duera. But because you can drop your worst qualifying performance and you can drop your worst final, Lindblad's still a title factor and he proves it with a fastest lap. 46-6 for the Brit in eighth. Yeah, Lindblad, he's not had the best starts to the race. He's dropped down to eighth position. That's not really what you want, especially when you're in within a chance of the title fight. You need uh, consistent points. You need consistent finishes throughout the whole season. Four rounds is this championship, and every single one counts. Antonelli leading by six temps. Kamara not far behind. He will still be within a chance of winning this race, but Antonelli, he's got a bit of breathing room now.
Here is Antonelli, a little bit more dust picked up as they come through that time by. I think Drivers is pushing a little bit too far over the edge of turn one as Yuga Chukwu makes his bid and gets past Stenshawn. So he's now trying to chase after Yannick Debrabanda in sixth position. So this is an interesting battle. This is Lindblad now closing up on Yuga Chukwu. And is Lindblad going to make his bid up towards the final sector? This is two drivers, both in a Formula One program, and they're side by side. And Lindblad gets the move before they even get to the breaking point. Amazing from Lindblad. He just got a better exit. And Lindblad is storming his way back through the pack. Now we've got a race on our hands from Lindblad as he tries to chase after the top six. Yeah, great move there from Limblad, taking every opportunity that he gets. He saw Yuga Shuku just lift off the throttle a little bit to let his teammate pass. He clearly acknowledges that Limblad is the quicker of the drivers. And who's that off there? That looks like that is Sato. That's Sato off in the RFM. You can see just cutting across the grass, the car bouncing up and down. As we see now, the drivers going through our frames. That's the 131 of Gilter. Gilter in third position. He's the home hero, as some may say. He's doing a great job on the podium right now, but Savrukin, the driver that he passed earlier, not giving it up. Gilter is doing a fantastic job here in third position. He wants to put some French interest on the podium and a great run in third place. Antonelli and Kamara still separated by a few tenths of a second. It's now up to eight tenths of a second as they come through. So Antonelli doing the best he can to get away from Kamara. But this is nothing in it between these two drivers. And they are still pushing hard. Now, a little further back, we've got Ruben Moya there in 12th in front of Kucharczyk, Solov, Del Pino, Coivisto, and uh, I think that's Eduardo Villa. But what a fight back from Ruben Moya. He is up 15 places. He was 27th wow. on the grid. Oh, and a spin! Solov going into the barriers! Oh, Solov, he just got the mistake there off the curb, and he just gets chucked out of the race. Oh, what an unfortunate incident for Nicolas Solov. He just got one wheel on the grass, and it spat him out of the game. Solov is such a shame. He had an incident yesterday in one of his heats, and unfortunately, history has repeated himself. Solov makes a mistake off into the barrier, and that does look like that will be Solov no, done for the race. The marshal pulls the car off the track. Solov, he walks off in defeat. Antonelli, he's really started to pick up the pace now with second separating the top two. This could have been a victory for Nikola Solov this weekend. He easily could have been on the top step of the podium here. And it's such a disaster for the Bulgarian. He could so, so easily have been the man on the top step. But uh, the weekend got away from him. It started last night in the red flag race when he couldn't restart. He could have been in the top three of the grid very easily. And that could have been an opportunity. But now Solov will have to rebuild, regroup, drop this round and make his way to Sarno, where he could be strong again. He's not out of this European title fight yet. It's going to be very exciting and very interesting to see what he can do. But he's definitely going to have to work hard for it now. Oh, that's Turney. That's Joe Turney off. My goodness, Joe Turney has had a moment. And that's on the final sector. He now rejoins way down the order. Joe Turney in 28 out of the 29 runners still going around the circuit. Make that 30. But Joe Turney out of luck this time as he goes off the road. You can see drivers really pushing the limits and getting spat out. We're only on lap 11 and 25. And some of the big names are starting to crumble. Turney, that's such a shame to see from the break. We were talking to him earlier on in the day. It was actually at the start of the day. He was hopeful for the races that he had later on. And unfortunately, it hasn't quite gone his way. 1.6. This is the Antonelli that we know. 1.6 seconds separating. And talking about separating, Limblad goes past Dubravanda. Dubravanda falls victim to Limblad's charge. So Limblad is bouncing back. He has time to get to the podium. He's got uh, 14 laps still to do something about the guys in front. So Limblad is charging forward. He clearly feels more comfortable and more smooth on the car than he has over the recent races in the weekend. And he is now up to P6. Limblad is only a second away from Station. In fact, not even. So there's still a good chance for Limblad to work his way to the podium because Jute, Sabukin and Stenshawn are very close together in their fight for third position. Here they come around the final bend and up over the crest. Kamara still trying to stay in touch with Antonelli, but the Italian is just blitzing away. He was clearly just looking after the tyres and now he's able to unlock that vapid pace and just disappear out in front. Stenshawn on the move on the inside of Artem Sabukin gets through to fourth position and that's going to be ammunition for Lindblad. Here I come, boys. 
Limblad on the back of this battle now. The 105 will soon fall victim to the car Republic behind him. But Antonelli, you saw Kamara staying on with him for a couple of laps. But now we're in the last stages of the races. Antonelli has found something different. Who's that up the inside? That's a broken. Limblad follows through. Stenchel drops two position. Will Dubrabanda be able to do anything about it? No, he won't. He sticks in behind Stenchel. Stenchel manages to shut the door at the perfect time. But Limblad, now he's after Savrukin. Killer instinct from Limblad. He saw a gap, went for it. Absolutely storming up the inside. No guarantee that Stenshawn was going to shut the door on him there or not. But Limblad decisive. I've got to make my progress. I've got to work my way through the field. The Brabanda going wheel to wheel there with Stenshawn as uh, De Brabanda is still trying to get Bon over on the Norwegian. But Limblad is setting up the move here on Artem Sevrukin. You can expect to see it as they come up towards the left hander this time. Warren Kim gets a warning flag. Here comes Limblad! Unlocks the move! Excellent slingshot and he gets into fourth place. Just one more car and he's on the podium again. Limbalad doing a great job at making his way through the field. He's slicing through them like it's an easy thing to do. But Limbalad, I'm guessing that's what he's good at. The 102 on an absolute charge right now. Ahead of him is Gilter. The French promise of the podium is slowly coming to a fade as Limbalad starts to arrive on the back of Gilter. Gilter, he checks behind him. He sees a new face. And that's a worry. And you know what this means for Lindblad, it puts him back into second in the Drivers' Championship, two points ahead of Antonelli, even if the Italian wins the race. So for Lindblad's point of view, this is the best tonic to his difficult weekend. He is fighting his way back into contention. Now, Deborah Banda, closing up on Stenshaw, Yuga Chikwu, closing up on both of them as they go through the left, through the right, and then they'll come up the crest once again. Antonelli, two and a half seconds clear of Rafael Chavez Camara. Gilter running one in third. Here comes Limblad. He's not going to wait around. He's not going to hang about for this. He's going to go for third at the first opportunity. Ten to go. Limblad absolutely flying on the field. And who's that off? That's the 140. That's a shame to see him off the track. The 140, that looks like it may be. Uh, that is Warren Kim. That looks like that's Warren Kim out the way. But talking about out the way, Limblad. You can see knocking on the door of Gilter. He's looking for that podium. That third step is his. And if Limbla keeps up the pace, he might even be contention for second position on the grid up the inside. Limbla, he makes it look so easy. Effortless overtake as he makes his way past Gilter. Third position now in the offing for Limblad, and that's definitely getting his title attack back on track. And he's now going to be a point off. Well, it's going to be several points now ahead of Antonelli. He will only be 13 behind Rafael Kamal. If he's got time to catch and pass him, then this European Championship fight is a three-horse race. And it's definitely looking strong for Lindblad. He's still got 2.3 seconds to make up on Rafael Kamara, but his lap times have consistently been a quarter of a second a lap quicker than the Brazilian. So Rafael Chavez Kamara is not safe and sound in second place by a long shot. There's still nine laps to go. And for Arvid Lindblad, he will never have been more determined to get into second place to keep his European title hopes alive and to show to everybody he's the man for the job. Yeah, Limblad, he definitely didn't have a good start, but he's changing his fortunes around Antonelli. Three seconds over the rest of the field. Great drive from him right now. Yeah, he's extending that gap to three seconds. Clearly, Antonelli was sandbagging in the early stages, just looking after the tyres and thinking, right, are you sure you can catch me, Raphael? Let me prove you wrong. <laughs> Engage ignition and throttle. Boom, I'm gone. Yeah, Antonelli, an outstanding driver all weekend. No one has been able to get near the driver apart from the early stages of the race where Kamara was able to get within a couple of attempts of him Antonelli has denied him any hopes and dreams of getting the win here in a, uh, in SA but we see Antonelli go over the crest now and across the line 18 laps completed on his 19th right now Kamara 3.4 seconds behind the gap is ever extending and it's shrinking between Kamara and Lindblad. Lindblad has uh, closed that gap down to two seconds. If Lindblad can look after tyres a little better over the last seven laps and close in to the Brazilian, we may get a last lap scrap between these two and they can't afford to hit each other because they know how strong Antonelli is here and how strong he's likely to be at Sano and Duera, two circuits he knows and loves. So this is definitely gonna be a tough one 
for Lindblad and Kamara. They're going to have to accept their fate in second position. I'm astonished at Antonelli's pace. He's in the 46.5s. Everyone else is in the 46.7s, 8s and 9s. Antonelli just storming away up front. He has been the class of the field. Here's the battle for fourth place. Gilter versus Sevrukin. Then Sean and then the Brabanda. Watch for Sevrukin into turn two. Is this going to be a move for position? No, Gilter is able to extend a little bit there through turn one. Superior knowledge of this circuit counting in Gilter's favour. Yes, yeah, Savrukin arriving on the back of Gilter. These two drivers, we saw them battling earlier and it looks like Savrukin, he's came back for something else and he's came back for that position as well. You can see the white helmet of the French promise, the home hero of Gilter as he's currently in fourth position. The podium hopes slowly fading away as Arvid Lindblad is extending that gap between them but shortening the gap between him and Kamara. And it looks like Savrukin Yes, Stenshon de Brabander to worry about as well. 1.5 seconds now between Kamara and Lindblad. It's a question of when will he catch Kamara? Not if. There's five laps to go, and Lindblad has already done a quarter of the work in the closing stages. Kamara's tyres look like they may fade dramatically. Lindblad has got to try and keep a lid on himself. He doesn't want to push too hard too soon because he's got to make sure he does actually catch Kamara rather than burn out the tyres because he's got to push, but he's also got to conserve. It's a long race, there's 25 laps of the circuit, and we've got five to go, including this one. Now, the Brabander has caught right up to the back of Stenshorn. Stenshorn has caught back to the back of Severukin, and Severukin has caught right onto the tail of Evan Gilter. Four drivers, and they all want that fourth place shot. Yeah, Limblad, 1.2 seconds separating him and Kamara. This will update as they cross the line. Is it less than a second? No, it isn't. It's yep, still yellow one. flags. Yellow flags down at the bottom end of the circuit. Who's There's, that off? Yeah, someone's gone. I think it's Arthur Rojan. Arthur oh, Rojan. No. I think we just saw him there. So Rojan walking away from his car. And I don't think he's the only one. I think we've also lost Ricardo Gracia. There he is. Ricardo Gracia for the Forza Racing Team. The Brazilian not happy. So Ricardo Gracia walking away from the scene of his stricken expert chassis. And uh, what a shame for the Forza Racing Team. You can see there on the back straight. That is... Is that Alfio Spina? Yes, it is. Alfio Spina is there sat on the back of the bank watching the race go on. But Yannick de Bramanda closing up on Martinius Stenshorn. And this is a great little tussle between the two of them as they race for sixth position. But is there going to be enough time for Lindblad to catch Kamara? The gap between them is now only seven tenths of a second. Lindblad is pushing hard here on the back of Kamara. And it's up to the Brazilian to hang on for dear life. Yeah, three laps remaining. The Brit and the Brazilian are gonna bring it down to the final lap. Limblad, fastest lap. What do you expect? His pace is outstanding. 46.532. He's showing the pace on the track with the gap visually closing between him and Kamara. Lap after lap, corner after corner. Limblad getting ever so closer to the driver ahead. Yeah, Kamara can't match that pace. He's four tenths of a second per lap down. So this is going to be Limblad closing up with two to go, I think. They come across the line now. Antonelli across the line and then Kamara and Limblad. And now there's less than half a second in it. It's now or never for Arvin Limblad. And he will be motivated. He wants to get past the Brazilian. Kamara is the championship leader. Even if Limblad passes him, Kamara will still be the championship championship leader but this is a state of intent for Lindblad he wants to prove to Kamara you have not got 2021 your whole way I am a factor and I'm going to get under your skin with only two laps remaining if Lindblad wants any chance at that second position he will have to throw caution to the wind and that looks like that may, may oh. be a mechanical for Kacharczyk that's unfortunate to see the 130 will have to come into the pits with one lap remaining of the race and it looks like it will be last lap thrown for Antonelli but Limblad all over the back of Kamara let's see what happens here as the drivers go down into turn one we'll go down into turn two now Kamara just in front of Limblad Limblad very close less than a car width between the two drivers now as they go into turn four Limblad all his overtaking opportunities are going past him like the wind how long is left and where will he be able to do it? The last lap of the last race of the weekend. So it's now up to Lindblad. He's only going to get one shot and it's going to be the left-hander up the hill. Antonelli with the win. Here comes Kamara closing the door. Lindblad's going to try. He goes the long way round to get the switch back on the undercut. Lindblad will try. He's not going to get an opportunity. Antonelli takes the checkered flag and wins at Honor Le Bois. Who's going to be second? It's Kamara in front of Lindblad. 
What a fight and what a way to finish the weekend in style. Antonelli, welcome back to the party. Yeah, amazing drive there from Antonelli. 4.4 seconds ahead of anyone else in the field. If you want to dominate and make a statement, Antonelli, you've done that perfectly. Kamara just manages to beat Limblad one more lap and it may have been a different story. Just masterful for Antonelli. That wasn't a win, that was a stakeout. He just completely checked away for the rest of the field. And that is how you win in dominant fashion in front of all comers and pretenders. This is a wonderful return to the top of the podium for Andrea Kimi Antonelli. If anybody doubted him in 2021, if you thought Genk was going to be a hallmark for the season ahead, you were wrong. Andrea Kimi Antonelli is here for the title and he wants to win back-to-back -back European crowns. He's got a chance now and it's better than ever before. So Andrea Kimi Antonelli with the win from Rafael Kamara and Arvid Lindblad, Artem Sevrukin and Yannick de Prabanda from Martinia Stenshorn, Yuga Yuga Chukwu and Evan Gilter. Finishing off the top 10, the Italians, Brando Badoa and Luigi Coluccio. Morgan Porter is 11th from Timotus Kuchacic, Emili Coivisto and Bruno Del Pino, then Ruben Moya and Tuka Tarpanen. Matias Mogato 17th in front of Nicolas Pertilati. Then it's Marlon Hernandez in front of Eduardo Villa. Joe Turney in front of Andre Zhivnov. And then we have Igor Chapil, Gerard G, Ariel Elkin, and Rintaro Sato. The retirements, Norton Andreessen out of the race on the final lap. And then unfortunately, we also lost a fair few others. Ricardo Gracia, Arthur Rojan, Warren Kim. What could have happened in the race for Nicolas Solov? We'll never, ever know. Hugo Besson, Alfio Spina, and Caspian Hagman with the retirements on the first lap. Three of them in total. Alfio Spina, Juho Vartanen, and Rafael Modenese.